Hi everyone, I'm Tim from AppBoy and welcome to the 2024 season of Fed Up, where we'll be focusing on all aspects of Microsoft technology in the federal government and the wider public sector. So joining me today in our public sector office in Arlington, Virginia, is my good friend Wale. So Wale, welcome. Thank you for coming down and joining us today. Thank you so much, Tim. Thank you for having me. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself to the audience? Sure. I'm Wale Moses. I work for Microsoft in our federal civilian division. And among other things, I'm one of the folks who's helping lead our generative AI strategy uh, for the federal government. Well, thank you. It's great to have you here. Now, in this series, for those who haven't tuned into us before, uh, fed up doesn't mean we're fed up, right? It doesn't mean we're, we're angry or upset about anything. This is really just a fun name about how we're going to cover some bite-sized, snackable topics about what's up top of mind for our federal government and wider public sector audience. So, well, hey, if we're going to talk about what's top of mind at the moment, generally uh, in the technology sector, I don't think it's an understatement to say generative AI is, is, is right up there, right? You would be correct. That is definitely the hot topic over the past year and a half, at least in the federal government and in the wider commercial arena as well. Now, is this just a hype cycle? Is it just a buzzword? I mean, we're seeing a lot, especially on AppWay, you know, we're seeing a lot of traction on the commercial side of things. What's the uptake like in government at the moment? Is this something that's here to stay or is it just flashing the bed? I would say it's not a hype cycle. I mean, I think initially there's a reflexive reaction where people thought like, this is just a parlor trick. This is just a fad. But it's clear that this is a technology that has legs and we're seeing customers actually uh, do exploration, do proof of concepts, and now production uh, types of applications and where they're getting a lot of value from it. That's fantastic. Do you have some examples of that? Absolutely, yeah. So we have uh, different agencies. Different agencies are using generative AI in different ways. So mo one of the first places that agencies typically want to start is they're fascinated with ChatGPT and the, the ability to use natural language to converse and, and get answers to their questions. And they're asking, hey, I've got this corpus of knowledge within our agency. We've got all these documents, hundreds of thousands or millions of documents. Wouldn't it be great to enable our people, our agency workers to have that sort of conversational experience with our data in our documents. And so that's one of the first places agencies are starting. But after that, they start to go into lots of different areas as well. Right. And that, it's not just about getting those personalized answers. There's an aspect of security there as well. Right? You don't want to go out to the general public models and be pasting in and copying in sensitive, potentially sensitive information. So having that intern. That's right. Yeah. That, and that's the reason a lot of our customers are looking at services like Azure OpenAI, because it gives them that same experience as far as having that large language model, but it's happening within their own private environment, within their own guardrails. And so it's, it's a secure way to get, still have access to that technology, but it's not going into the wider issue. I mean, ChatGPT is probably an example we're all familiar with. Are there any other examples where agencies are using generative AI or AI applications um, to, for, for their constituents or for other services? Definitely. So lots of different use cases. So one of the other areas that we're seeing a lot of interest in is the ability of generative AI to understand software code and even older languages like COBOL. Think about all the legacy systems and mainframes that are still operational within government. But the people who wrote that language, who understood it, are no longer employed. So using generative AI, many agencies are seeing opportunity to understand that language, to document that language, and then to go further to migrate it to a modern language. We're also seeing a lot of agencies use it for customer service applications, whether internal customer service or sometimes citizen-facing customer service, using generative AI to respond to citizens. Just like faster responses, better quality responses. Absolutely. It helps them scale. It helps them deliver better customer service. And then in some cases, they're using it in conjunction with a, a real human customer service agent where the generative AI helps them to do some research about what types of uh, interactions we've had with that, that citizen previously. What is the best answer I can, I can give this citizen to, to answer this question using our internal knowledge base? And so I say right now, the possibilities are endless. In many cases, we see government agencies coming to us with ideas that we hadn't thought about. So that's awesome. It's, it's pretty exciting. Cool. And what you mentioned there about having a, a human in control, that's exactly why it's called a co-pilot and not an autopilot, right? Yeah, when we think about co-pilot, and by the way, we have lots of co-pilots as Microsoft. That's so over 50 now, right? Well over 50, and you should, you, you'll expect that to continue to grow. So we think about co-pilots as 
Think about Copilot as us infusing intelligence, infusing generative AI into some of our existing services. And so one of the Copilots that we're excited about and that federal agencies are excited about is Copilot for Microsoft 365. And so that's one example. And to your point earlier, we always think about, we can call it Copilot because it's not an autopilot. The human is always in the loop. Now, we can't talk about Copilot without addressing the elephant in the room. And, you know, we hear a lot of misconceptions and, and a bit of myth busting I think we can do today in terms of, you know, we hear some rumblings, oh, AI is not ready for government or it's not available in the GCC or, or so on and so forth. Maybe you can help us clear some of that up today. Yeah, good question. So absolutely happy to clear that up. So we, we have a, a couple couple of different ways to think about generative AI from Microsoft. And so you can think about it as Azure OpenAI, which is one of the services that we offer within the Azure environment. It's a platform for customers to build applications on. By the way, we this beyond Azure OpenAI, we have uh, we have we give our customers access to other generative AI services, the Meta Llama 2 uh, large language models, the Lestraw model lots of uh, open open models, uh, as well as models from Microsoft Research, small language models. And so um, when it comes to Azure OpenAI though, uh, that is FedRAMP. So that's within our FedRAMP scope for Azure. Available. That's available in, in Azure Commercial, FedRAMP High. Yep. And then in February, we announced the availability of Azure, the Azure OpenAI service in Azure Gov. And FedRAMP is in progress. We think that's imminent there. When we shift over to talk about Copilot from Microsoft 365, for GCC specifically, that will be available this summer. So we, we made that announcement. Yep. And so that is also imminent, that's coming soon as well. And I think we were talking offline before, you mentioned a lot of agencies are already starting to dip their toe into the co-pilots, are starting to play with them in, in sandbox environments, are starting to get ready for that. Yeah, that's been pretty exciting. So we've had agencies who are so excited about the potential for co-pilot for Microsoft 365 that they, went out and, and created sandboxes in a different environment so they could start experimenting with it. So it, they'll have that experience and they'll be ready for it when it becomes available with, within the GCC environment. All right, well, I think that's a good introduction, a good primer into what we want to do with this series. Uh, and a good starter for the next topic, which is talking about some of the things we can do to get ready for AI, right? And absolutely. Data quality, data security, data trust. So. Um, stay tuned for that. If you want to find out more about how you can use AI in your agency today, absolutely contact your Microsoft rep. They'll be more than happy to help you out or contact us at our point. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of resources on our website, uh, including a blueprint for some of our data readiness for AI that you can follow as a sneak peek about what we'll be talking about next. So I think that about wraps it up. Thank you for your time today. Thank you so much. All right. And until next time, this has been Fed Up.